Welcome to the Human Nature Channel. I'm your host, Alex Tamsul, and what am I doing here? Well, no farm garage video this week. I didn't go up to the farm for Thanksgiving since me, my dad, and my brother went to a restaurant. I'll do one next week. But right now, in some Las Vegas Shooting Truth community news, Eric Peters has posted a new video titled, Las Vegas Shooting Thermostat Data Request. I'll leave a link in the notes so you can watch it for yourself. This video is a fascinating little story about the Honeywell E528 Smart Digital Thermostat, a temperature control unit found in all the hotel rooms in Mandalay Bay. With this device, you have temperature and humidity settings, remote temperature settings, light level detection, and a motion sensor. These features are important, especially the motion sensor, since the input would yield data about the goings on in rooms 32135 and 32134 on October 1st, 2017. We learn an independent LVS investigator filed a request to the Public Information Office of the LVMPD for the thermostat's data. And what you get to see is Sheriff Joe Lombardo's response and further correspondence. The statute duel between the investigator and Sheriff Lombardo is a wonder to behold. As you follow the exchange, you clearly see the investigator had his shit together. So did Lombardo. We also get to see the investigator file a Freedom of Information Act request to the FBI to obtain the evidence logs concerning the thermostats, which, as it turns out, the FBI owns. Apparently, the request is still pending. Go watch. Next, Mike Turber is now on Las Vegas shooting survivor Eddie Schmidt's YouTube channel, Secret Safe With You. Mike doing his usual no-nonsense documentary style of LVS investigating. I especially like the last video, Vegas shooting, Brady Cook volley, contagious warp thoughts, denial, disinfo, helicopter lies. It should come as no surprise I'm sympathetic with the concerns expressed by Mike here. But what was even more interesting than the video was some of the comments. Las Vegas Shooting Archive says, Great video minus the constant need to pull other people's names into it. The investigation isn't about them. It's not about KL or TB or Nini or Mike or you or me or anyone else. It's not about where 1005 lives or who said what to whom. The investigation is about what actually transpired on October 1st. Las Vegas Shooting Archive is right. This endeavor we are all involved in should only be about the LVS and the victims. That would be true in a perfect world without tribes. What Las Vegas Shooting Archive is stating is how I felt originally. I started off on good terms with the likes of KL and Nini and Truth Seeker and wasn't particularly keen on throwing that all away, but that was before Mike's 5x5 News Channel got taken down under circumstances I've covered in previous videos. This being the Human Nature Channel, where I consider myself something of a student of human nature, I understand and recognize a I don't have a dog in this fight dilemma. but. If people are going to talk about crisis actors, or non-lethal ammunition being used, or Saudi Air National Guard using Pakistani contractors in helicopters to fire on country music fans, assertions supported by nothing but air, my question is, do we have a responsibility to call fraud? Or at least try and wake people up to the fact that all they're doing is reckless speculation. Reckless speculation only harms the Las Vegas shooting truth community ultimately. If I see fraud and I don't say fraud, what does that make me? And speaking of fraud busting, the next channel I'd like to talk about is Vegas October 1 Sounds and its recent video, Las Vegas shooting possible sniper? Question mark? Richard, our intrepid engineer here, may have located the signature of a gunshot separate from the shooting from Mandalay Bay at 18 seconds before Volley 6A from the east side. This is still very tentative since Richard tells us he needs to take more measurements and do more calculations, so the jury is still out. But you should take a good look at all his videos, especially Las Vegas shooting, shots after midnight, and examination of Hoover evidence. 
Hoover famously stated in some of his videos there was automatic gunfire heard after midnight and recorded by BWC. Richard tears that to shreds. Gentleman that he is, Richard doesn't call John E. Cullen Hoover a fraud. He just makes an airtight case that Hoover doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. Finally, there was a video posted by Crowdsource The Truth on Friday where Jason Goodman had John Cullen as a guest, something Goodman does every Friday. Now, I know I've said I don't watch Crowdsource The Truth if I can help it, but just when I thought I was out, they pull me back in. Well, if you follow me on Twitter, you would know that since September, I've been using the Twitter handle The Greaser Warhol because of my mother's family's connection to Andy Warhol and his family, something I mention in other videos, specifically video number 23, The Greaser Warhol was a friend of mine. I also send Jason Goodman tweets from time to time just to let him know I'm still thinking about him. So it is noteworthy that on November 29th, the title of Jason's video was The Andy Warhol Las Vegas Shooting Connection with Special Guest John Cullen. In my video number 48, The Las Vegas Shooting, Zero Tolerance for Nobody Died at the LVS, I conducted a poll and asked if any of you thought Jason was trying to send me a message by having Dr. Cyril Weck of Squirrel Hill on his show. Since I'm dealing with another example of I don't have a dog in this fight, I'm not doing any more polls. That one stayed up like a lead tip. And what's the point if it's pretty clear that the grinning goof Goodman has me in mind with a video like the one posted on Friday? Jason Goodman doesn't have the guts to confront me directly. He knows I'll make him look like a lazy ass who doesn't do his homework. He knows I'll ask, did you see the Vegas Sounds October 1 video that proves John Cullen is a complete dope? So instead, Jason gets cute with his video topics. I have no respect for that or for him. If you ever hear me refer to Vegas vampires, it's Goodman and Cullen that I'm talking about. But I'm not afraid of either of them. I have my garlic to ward them off. The garlic is stuffed in the green olives, but I don't understand whether this would be a problem. I'd like to revisit an issue I covered in my video number 39, Odds and Ends. In that video, I took a look at the lock interrogation report, which told us of Stephen Paddock's playing around with his hotel room's doors, which began in earnest as far back as 925-17 when he was booked into room 32-135. It continued as well with the door to room 32134 up until 18 minutes before the shooting, so we're told. In that video, I talked about what happened at 6.40 p.m. saying, we pick up the action in room 32135, door open from inside, then deadbolt released. Hey, wait one second. I know I'm just a simple country boy, but shouldn't that be the other way around? Like, don't you release the deadbolt first and then open the door? Well, maybe not. When I originally read that in the lock interrogation report, I took it literally and actually pictured an open door. I kept asking myself, how could somebody release a deadbolt on a door already open? But this is something I've changed my mind on, and the change happened about five days ago. I was in my kitchen cooking some breakfast. I had the Las Vegas shooting on my mind, thinking about Paddock's peripatetic behavior. Then it came to me in a flash. You could have an open door and then flip the deadbolt open. All lefty Stephen Paddock had to do was push down on the door handle first, then flip the bolt. As far as the database was concerned, the door is open, even if it was never physically open. At 6.41 p.m., the door to room 32135 is open from the inside. At 6.42, the door is closed. At 6.47 p.m., the door is open from the inside. At 6.47 p.m., the door is closed. At 6.50 p.m., the door is open from the inside. At 6.50 p.m., the door is closed. What's he doing? Trying to air out the room? 
And at 6.50 p.m., the deadbolt is thrown. So, on my new reading of this, Stephen Paddock still remains in room 32135 while all this is happening. What in the world is Paddock up to? Anyway, from that point, nothing happens to the door of room 32135 for the next two and a half hours. Although we do get a brief bit of activity with the door of room 32134 at 7.40 p.m. We don't see any more activity from Paddock until 9.29 p.m., which seems to be some special time because he's bouncing back and forth between the doors of his two hotel rooms, opening and closing them. What happens finally with the door to room 32135 happens within the space of a minute. Door is open from the inside, deadbolt released, then guest card accepted and door is closed. So where is Steve? Well, apparently this time he's on the outside of the room in the hall. Next, three minutes later at 9.32 p.m., we get not one but two error no access to the room messages which is kind of peculiar since if paddock used the wrong key card don't you think he'd just use his other one why try it twice beyond that little mystery i don't know how else to interpret all this as other than confirmation that paddock was in the hall for close to three minutes but the next thing we see at 9.33 is the door was opened from the inside, although it was not by the guest, but by the door unit internal. What the hell does opened by door unit internal mean? I can't make heads or tails of that. The last things we see Paddock doing to the door of room 32135 results in an error no access to this room, then a guest card accepted. From that point on, from 9.33 to 9.36 p.m., we get a door is closed. The door is open from the inside. The door is closed and a deadbolt thrown. When it comes to room 32.134, Paddock resumes with the door fiddling from 9.39 until 9.47, 18 minutes before the shooting starts, so we're told. We won't see any other activity from the door to room 32135 until 11.20 p.m. when we see door is open from the inside, again from door unit internal. And that door opening was brought to us by Hancock and the boys. In preparation for this video, I re-watched Daniel James's excellent video, Las Vegas Shooting, Lock Interrogation Report, Discrepancy Animation. I'll leave a link to it in the notes. I'll even supply a graphic here to show you the events to the doors between 9.29 and 9.34 p.m., complete with a circle around the puzzling situation where at first Paddock seems to be outside the door to room 32134 when he gets an access denied for using the wrong key card, then somehow manages to open the door to room 32134 from the inside. To quote Mr. James, what the hell is going on here? Two question marks, I couldn't have said it better myself. Here is something I'm going to throw out to my viewers to see if somebody with more expertise in these matters can give me a definition. What is a door unit internal? I went to Google and punched in door unit internal and didn't get anything. I then punched in door unit internal hotel door and still didn't get a clear answer. That might be a description of the locking mechanism itself, but I have no idea what opened by door unit internal means. Confused? Join the club. But let me take a stab at trying to find some meaning in Stephen Paddock's door opening and closing behavior. Since Paddock the accountant seemed to live his life as if it was on a spreadsheet, 
I think it's a safe bet to say his actions weren't meaningless. There had to be some point to what this meticulous planner was doing. But what could that be? Since the whole thing I've just laid out is confusing, maybe trying to create confusion was Paddock's goal. Could it be Paddock guessed that after a horrific event such as the LVS, that a small army of Las Vegas truthers would descend on the scene looking for answers? In a message from beyond the ashes urn, Stephen Paddock might be saying, Hello suckers, I'm still smarter than all of you. Or maybe it was a bad case of nerves and it was better than biting his nails. Have a good one.